2024 Ford Mustang GT First Drive, Superiority and Excellent Performance. You never know exactly what you're going to get with a V8 powered Mustang. Some of the best performance cars we've ever driven include the likes of the flat plane crank powered Mustang Shelby GT 350R, the burly Mustang Boss 302 Laguna Seca, and the flyweight 1993 Mustang Cobra. Others, such as the SN95 Mustang GT, were underwhelming, or worse, just plain forgettable. So, you might understand our hesitation to predict anything going into the media drive event for the new 2024 Ford Mustang GT. However, the surprisingly fun 2024 Mustang EcoBoost gave us hope, could the Mustang GT possibly deliver? What's new with the Mustang GT? Before we dive in, let's quickly cover what's new and what isn't. The most obvious change to the F650 Mustang is the new sheet metal. Ford designers applied first-gen Mustang styling marks again, for the third straight generation, although they did an admirable job of making the car look fresh overall. Mixed in with obvious callbacks to the 67 and 68 are subtle nods to more recent Mustangs, such as the new Edge and S197-inspired taillights, as well as some new cues of its own. The EcoBoost, GT, and new, for 2024 Mustang Dark Horse all have unique front-end treatments. We particularly love the GT's new nostrils in its grille, which feed the heavily updated, freer-breathing 5.0-liter Coyote V8. The basic GT engine's two new airboxes, teamed with a larger plenum intake manifold, steel oil pan, and camshaft tweaks, result in a 20-horsepower boost, along with a 5-pound-foot deficit, versus the third-generation engine. With a healthy 480 horsepower and 415 pound-foot of torque on tap, we don't think any Mustang owner will crave more, but opting for the $1,225 active exhaust boosts output to 486 horsepower and 418 pound-foot of torque. A 500 horsepower variant of this engine is available in the Mustang Dark Horse, which we will drive very soon. Unlike Mustang EcoBoost buyers, GT shoppers get two transmission choices. A six-speed manual, the GetRag MT82, not a favorite of the Mustang Faithful, is standard, and a 10-speed automatic is an available option. The Dark Horse uses a different six-speed manual than the GT, Tremec TR3160. If that doesn't sound like a lot of change, well, that's because it isn't. The bulk of the alterations from S550 to S650 occurred at the steering and chassis level, as well as in the interior. Using prior Mustangs such as the Mac 1 and Shelby GT350 and GT500, as well as rivals like the Toyota GR Supra, as benchmarks, Ford clocked a lot of hours tweaking the 2024 Mustang's new steering rack and revised chassis and suspension. It also spent some extra time developing the new GT performance package. Available across the GT line, the $4,995 bundle swaps out the standard 3.15 limited slip rear for a 3.55 auto or 3.73 manual Torsen limited slip unit, 19-inch wheels with summer rubber, 6-piston front and 4-piston rear Brembos, stiffer springs, additional chassis bracing, and an electronic drift brake, among other things. MagnaRide electronically adjustable dampers are also available for $1,750 on Mustang GT Premium models. All Mustang GTS Ford had on hand for the launch were equipped with the performance package, MagnaRide dampers, and active exhaust system. Trick Pony While it's easy to criticize Ford for spinning its wheels with the 2024 Mustang's powertrains, a few miles in the Mustang GT were all it took to convince us Ford made the right choices in where to invest. Unlike rival Chevrolet Camaros, prior Mustang GTS tended to be a handful when driven hard at the absolute limit, with twitchy steering, an unsettled ride, and a propensity to easily oversteer in the hands of novice drivers. Why do you think spectators seek shelter when Mustangs exit cars and coffee events? But some of that Mustang Mach 1 and Shelby special sauce rubbed off on this new Mustang GT Fastback. Run ragged on some of the best canyon roads Los Angeles County has to offer, the new Mustang GT is shockingly poised and well-balanced. 
Instead of bucking through bends, the new Mustang dives in and carves through, with speeds and confidence previously only exhibited by Shelby badged cars. Although we wish a touch more road chatter was transmitted through the new steering rack, its effort and weighting are bang on, as is the suspension tuning. As to the latter, sport and track noticeably stiffened things up while still allowing enough compliance to avoid upsetting the car over mid-corner impacts. In between bends, the Mustang GT remains as monstrous as it always was. Our but dyno doesn't reveal the power differences between the revised Coyote and the older one, but it still remains a torque-rich rever, producing peak horsepower just shy of its 7,500 rpm redline while peak torque hits just before 5,000 rpm. The six-speed manual, now with the no-lift-shift feature the Camaro SS has had for years, is a treat to work. Shifts are short and mechanical, and each gate is easy to find from the factory. Although the Mustang will automatically rev match downshifts for you, a defeatable feature, pedal placement is perfect for heel-toeing the old-fashioned way, with good clutch feel and exceptional braking performance. The 10-speed automatic is faultless, too, even if it's not quite as fun. When left to its own devices, it responds to your driving style, holding gears for longer if it senses you're pushing hard, or upshifting for efficiency if you're simply cruising. Its rapid-fire upshifts will likely aid it in beating manual Mustangs at the drag strip, although its downshifts aren't quite as quick as those of dual-clutch transmissions such as the one found on the old Mustang GT500. Rowdy Roadster After being blown away by the tin-topped Mustang GT, we had high expectations for the new convertible. Unfortunately, it's not quite as cohesive a performance car as the coupe when you break away from highways and boulevards and into twisty switchbacks. The playful precision, not to mention the structural rigidity, of the fastback is missing from the vert. With a couple hundred extra pounds to lug around, ride quality is harsher, and there's noticeable cowl shake and chassis flex on anything but pristine pavement. Special screening. Regardless of the body style or powertrain you choose, the new Mustang's interior will likely take some getting used to. Gone is the dual cockpit arrangement seen on every Mustang since 1994, instead you'll find a dual screen, driver-focused cabin akin to what you'd find on recent BMWs. The cabin undoubtedly lacks the personality of older Mustangs, it tries to make up for this with items like the ability to customize the display's color schemes and with a Fox body-inspired gauge cluster option, but as far as the driver is concerned, it's easy to use and operate. The digital instrument cluster and infotainment displays are crisp, clear, and easy to navigate. The former, for all its various gauge layouts, fundamentally works the same as in every Mustang from the past two decades. The latter cants toward the driver, making most of the digital buttons easy to reach, even if the previous Mustang's hard buttons are less distracting and easier to use. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.